I am kind of surprised that, you know, someone just walked right up in here and committed a murder. So many people around. Good day, Miss Reed. Go ahead, I've cleared the room for you. And the room is stifling. Solid sense of dredge that you can... That you only find next to a corpse. Quite different from the reading of the court as on Killer in the, the papers. Every problem seems inconsequential until it is at your doorstep. Poor Arya. If you can find the monster that did this, perhaps the spirit can rest. Saints of Blood. Well, I tell Felipe. Uh, it was Felipe's girl, wasn't it? It would be pertinent to look around the room or inspect the body first. Look around the room first. The rake and spacing of these claw marks seems oddly uniform. As the old saying go, symmetry is rarely found in nature. On the contrary, symmetry can be found in nature often. And memories of my college days serve me a twee saying, really. The concentration on blood suggests that the struggle began on the bed and proceeded until she had the energy to continue. Is this reticule? Terrible, it's our it's reticule. Blood and torn to shreds. That's a handbag, is what it is. Take it, because it might be worth something. There's precious little in it, but perhaps I'll use it myself. Here, your memory on in some way. Nothing else, I suppose I could pawn it. Pocket watch. Pocket watch looks rather familiar. Have I seen it before? The interior cover is engraved with a decorative, decorative image of a bird in flight. There appears to be significant scratch marring the image. Hmm. I'm going to leave it here. This is evidence in an active case. Perhaps I should ask if I might take it to identify it. Take it to identify it myself. You can simply leave, it here, leave its identification to the bobbies and check back later. Though that's bound to be a slow process that'll, that I'll need not see answers on for a long time i'm leaving it here because like there's a chance i'll come back as the dwarven engineer and maybe this is significant for some reason i'm not a dwarven engineer your lifeless and torn up body lies moldering on the brothel floor by the saints it's all all the more haunting up close I'm going to keep Ariana's purse. Perhaps I'll hold on to this for now. I'll find whoever did this to you. You know that, don't you, Arya? Where should I start? Let's inspect the body. The intuition way. Ugh. There are many gaping and ragged wounds across her entire body. She's been thoroughly brutalized as if she were torn apart. Last it'd be the monster who did this. Observe the room. Observe the blood splatter. There's a spattering of blood across the nearby across nearly the entire room. Though it seems most concentrated on the bed in the area where the body lies. This concentration of blood suggests she was attacked while on the bed, and the struggle with her attacker until finally collapsing on the floor. She already had lost so much blood from the first attack on the bed, how'd she have the endurance to fight much longer? Let's examine the torn stomach. Critical success. The torso of the deceased has been sliced open around the stomach and into the chest cavity. It's grim and gruesome work to sort through. 
Within the cavity of the flesh and bone, her organs form a disorderly chorus of reds, purples, and browns. Recognize a few, and yet others are cur curiously absent. Her heart is missing, as is her liver. I think other organs might be missing besides. Let's continue our study of the organs. Well, I'm really getting in there, aren't I? As you come through the viscera, it occurs to you that there are e either no bite marks upon the organs, or else all that is left of them is a sloppy, putrid mess of pierced and torn flesh. There are no half organs either. Nothing ripped apart or partially devoured. This was truly an animal attack. Why were some of the organs devoured wholesale and the others left completely alone? It's all far too clean. Let's investigate the puncture marks. This is getting good. Critical success. We're the best at this. The multitude of puncture wounds across her body seem to have one thing in common. They are, generally speaking, uniform, as if the creature created by the same weapon. Whatever created them pass in and out of the flesh cleanly with purpose. The puncture wounds, the shape of the injury, even the fight in the torn up corpse selects that this was an attack carried out by tooth and claw. But if that's the case, then why are the wounds clean? Did the creature, the creature bit but did not chew? Did it not tear off chunks of the still warm flesh to consume? There's nothing more to be done here. Oh man, we learned so much. Did he then jump out the window? One of the two places the killer could have entered the room, the other being the door, of course. When my fingers are along the wood grain and the hinges, feeling for any splintering. The killer entered this way. It appears they didn't force the window open. Uh, I suspect he left that way. Before we start, I thought I might let you know the prevailing theory, now that you've had the opportunity to inspect the room for yourself. Let's hear it then. The authorities believe that the crime was not committed by self-possessed hands. Specifically, they're working under the assumption that the killing was committed by a lycanthrope. Lycanthrope? Give, given this, as well as the last killing's approximate proximity to the full moon and what do you believe suffice to say there are many aspects of this case that do not make sense to me indeed there are cracks in that conclusion least of all that last night was not the full moon proper some werewolves have been known to lose their heads in the days preceding it but it is far from a universal affliction it would do best to reserve my judgment or I would do best to reserve my judgment, and for the, that matter, consider how much I'm willing to share with my friend here. But sharing our findings will be mutually beneficial to both of us insofar as understanding this case goes. That being said, it is hard to trust this unknown man, let alone sh his shadowy backers. So, Miss Reed, you've seen the body. Anything you'd like to share? I think I'm going to trust this guy completely. Like, he, he asked me to investigate the case. Like, unless he was trying to rip, thought I was dumb and was going to botch it. Like, I think he genuinely wants to solve the murder. Let's see. Move along and discuss my inspection of the crime scene. The whole scene was unusually gruesome, a horrific tableau. The room was awash in the blood. Share this detail. There was a great deal of blood. While most of it was on the bed, the splatter also spread to the walls and the floors. It would suggest that she fought before succumbing to blood loss. Surely someone hurt her if that was the case. What else did you see? The wounds were far too uniform to be random. I noticed something strange when looking closely at her wounds. They were altogether uniform, precise. There was no sign of mastication or, well, chewing. 
Well, Miss Reed, that is a most disturbing detail. It would certainly contradict the prevailing notion that this was done by a werewolf. Is there anything else? The state of her organs? Somewhere missing. Her heart and liver are missing. There, there may be additional organs missing as well, though. I'm no physician. Ah, a similar situation occurred with the other victims. Strokes his chin for a moment. Were there any further details you noticed? There was little sign of ingestion of the organs. There are no partial organs. Her heart and liver at least were missing wholesale. Every organ was either damaged nearly beyond recognition, though present, or left alone entirely. Were this an animal attack, I, one might expect some sign of feeding or partial consumption. Quite right. If it was not an animal... Must have been a manimal. Eve does not look shaken. His composure suggests these doubts had already crossed his mind. Was well, there anything else of note? Those are the details that struck me as per particularly strange. Found a considerable amount of evidence which he did not. Let's call him out, because I, I, I think he's going to say he noticed these too. Mr. Duvall, it seems like you missed a number of important details. His eyes narrow like he's caught me picking his pocket. One might counter by suggesting that you noticed an unusual amount of details, Miss Reed. I did really get in there. Like, I kind of imagine I'm covered in blood at this point. As soon as he finishes, his face regains its normal dispassion. No matter, I suppose you're right, Miss Reed. And you may have just blown this case wide open. I am impressed with your observational skills. Hopefully you'll learn not to overlook such minute details. You've made good progress here, Miss Reed. Let me know if there's anything else. Certainly. One more thing. I generally refrain from dealing directly with them, but the dock hounds have eyes and ears all over London. Molly O'Malley may be privy to some details regarding our perpetrator's true identity and whereabouts. Molly O'Malley. Wonderful. By the by, Miss Reed, would you like to... F I would like to fill you in on what we know of the other victims. It's important you know what we're walking into. Alright, what should I know? What would you like to discuss first? What can you tell me about the first killing? What would you pin as the first incident of this case? Can you tell me about the victim? First reported victim was a washerwoman by the name of Rachel Nichol Nichols. I recall hearing of her death. The papers claimed she was streetwalking when it occurred, though it, I never encountered her in any of the circles that I'm privy to. Indeed, Miss Nichols had her issues with gin and was sleeping rough outside of some shop or public house on the night of her death, surrounded by a tidy collection of Jonathan Silver Gin. Hogarth would be thrilled, I'm sure. An artist. Though I've no doubt found no indication that she ever worked as a dolly, let alone that evening in particular. Yeah, the papers reported as much. Can't say I'm surprised. Her body was found several months late past, at the height of the summer. Since a butt coming. However, I'm given to believe that there was an incident predate, that predated even hers. When Siney, whose body washed up on the Thames some two months prior to Miss Nichols. When Siney, search my memory. Gwen Siney. I have a niggling suspicious suspicion that I've heard that name from Ariana before. One second. Sorry, I had to mute while I coughed. She was a seamstress. Several of her organs were removed as well. And just as one of the later victims... 
was her body was dredged from the Thames. Her connection to the case is tenuous, but I loathe to write it off as coincidence. I believe I might have a connection to Miss Siney. I'm quite sure uh, Ariana spoke of her. Oh, a seamstress from her early years of memory serves. Miss Reed, that's remarkable. Gwen Swiney had, had ties to a later victim. That solidifies her connection to the case. We'll look deeper into her death and encourage you to do the same. This is an overwhelming amount of information to consider in this case. How do all these de incidents connect? I'd need to be a weaver to thread all this into any sort of decent tapestry. It's a lot to take in. Uh, what can you tell me about Hannah Lynn, the last month's victim? You're familiar with her? She used to work at the Rose. Myself and the other girls here remember her well enough. Say bien. I'm sure the, that will be helpful as we build our case, indeed. Anna Lind, just as the others were, she had been badly brutalized. Her body was a mess, and several of her organs were not present among the viscera. Just the same as the senseless saw otter that occurred last night. Can you tell me what Hannah's time at the Velvet Rose was like? It was not particularly close to Miss Lynn, but I recall her employment here ending perhaps a year, two years ago. Were the circumstances of the deceased's departure amicable? They seem to be. As far as I'm aware, she relocated to the South Bank of Thames. It was Madame Zora who suggested a more local brothel. She moved as planned and was thereafter employed with them. There was no hard feelings to speak of. I've heard much the same already, but thank you for sharing your perspective, Miss Reed. Always a pleasure to help. Now about the murders not in the papers. Have you heard about any other killings of this type that were not reported on? As you know, this woman was not the first victim of this particular modus operandi. You chose the phrasing carefully there. To answer your question, neither the crime scene nor the particulars of the victim are unique. They followed an obvious pattern, of course, that which pop popular consciousness is privy to, and others' similarities besides. I knew these atrocities were particularly gruesome, but it would seem many particulars of the case have been left out of public knowledge. There were similar incidents that, for one reason or another, have not been taken up by the press. Tragically, even accounting for them, there is a little to go off of in terms of identi identifying the subject. Little, but not nothing. Indeed, we already have spoken to of uh, Casey Logri. If memory serves, the Dolly Mop who was found with medicine from one of the Gordon from one Gordon Gray in his possession. Who's Gordon? Casey, the a recent victim. Any news on that front? I've already been to Mr. Gray's shop in Sora Square and had spoken to him, but I found nothing of consequence. I did, however, have the suspicion that he may not have been entirely forthcoming. Perhaps you might succeed where I did not. I'll pay him a visit when I have the chance. Best of luck, Miss Reed. I hope it turns something up worthwhile. I hope so, too. Anything else I should know? I'm afraid that is all I know of the other victims. Thank you for the information, as you said. I think it best we follow up on these leads for the time being. Of course, Miss Reed, best of luck. What do I have? Stole this purse. It's lovely. I mean, I in Victorian London, I feel like you just take evidence from a crime scene. That doesn't seem like a bad idea. I mean, it's not like they solve murders with 
on any more than like hunches back then. I think we should go see Mr. Gray. Or rather, let's start by seeing Felipe. See if he showed up after uh, we found the relationship between him and Ariana. Yeah, there he is. Fresh fish? Who doesn't need fresh fish? Oh dear, I've accidentally locked eyes with Felipe. Senorita Claro, necesito hablar canito, por favor. Uh, I would like a fish. Uh, morning, Felipe. Take some of that Pollock. Buena lesión. It'll be seven pence. Fair price as any. Thank you, my friend. My pleasure. Felipe, I'm not sure what you've heard. Clara, no one at the Rose will tell me where she's gone. Anyone I ask closes up like a clam. Cowardly thing to do, but I understand the impulse. Please, you must tell me anything you know. Ariana, mi alma. I need to know if she is all right. Am I really prepared to tell him anything about Ariana? You've heard nothing? I have heard whispers, and I have lo lost... Gen gendarmes circling the rose. Perhaps Ariana is hiding out for her safety? I gotta tell him the truth. I'm so sorry, Felipe. I barely have the words to say it myself. He shakes his head as if he does not believe me. He does not want to. But I spoke to her yesterday. She promised me an answer. Tell me where she is. I'm sorry, Felipe. It doesn't... It doesn't feels real that she's gone. I'm afraid Ariana is dead. No, but it cannot be. Who did this to her? You, you have to know. We'll find out, Felipe. That much you have my words, but I must be sure. Wouldn't be lies to let him in on the investigation. A heart soaked in grief renders clarity difficult. No one knows, Felipe. It pains me that all I can offer you is my condolences. Though perhaps... Tell Felipe Ariana's answer? Do I have Ariana's answer? I don't remember reading that. When I spoke to Ariana last night, she told me her answer to your proposal. See? She was going to accept. She spoke at length about her future with you. Ella habría aceptado? She would have accepted? That's what. Yeah, that's what I said. She seemed to be filled with great hope and love within the expectation that she would see you soon. Now that I've told him, I best take my leave. Gracias, Clara. Thank you for telling me everything. May I offer you some fruit in these trying times? Felipe, try this. It's just a little something to wash away the bitter aftertaste of it all. Gracias, Clara. I admit I've been skipping my meals. This worrying made me forget about my growling something. No shame in taking a break from time to time. Besides, can't have you getting scurvy like the average seaman. Ha ha ha, see, see. This will keep the scurvy away. Goodbye. It's good seeing you, my friend. Wow. That cranked us up to 100% hopeful. I can't say that I thought... <laughs> I thought my demeanor would improve by talking about somebody's murdered fiancé. But that always cheers me up. And we gave him a fruit. Oh, but most importantly, we bought a fish. And if you don't know why it's important we bought a fish, Sir Bacon here will tell you. Bacon greets me, running his, the length of his back across my leg. Good boy. 
Offer bacon a fresh fish. Only the best for the finest cat in Sora's Square. Bacon eats the fish unhurringly, clearly enjoying his meal. I'm gonna pet Bacon. Who's a happy cat? Is it you, Bacon? Bacon takes the pollock in his mouth and sits down behind him, then sits next to his prize and stares at me. Your services are no longer required at this time, servant. You are dismissed. Yay! We did the most important side quest. We found a fish and we gave it to a cat. We also gave a dog a raw steak. We have fed the animals of Sind Sovereign Syndicate. And with that, we're clearly the absolute best at this game. Speaking of which, before I carry on, uh, I think this is probably a good time to end it. I imagine I'm going to have quite the conversation with either Gray or Molly after this. And so that would be best for an opening of the next stream. Which will be tomorrow. Uh, we're going to plow through Sovereign Syndicate. And then we're going to play whatever game is number one in the polls. By the time I finish Sovereign Syndicate. Right now that's Coral Island. And so, uh, so yeah. If you haven't done that, go vote on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. And any money I do eventually make is just going to go to making the quality of content on this channel better. If you watch it on Twitch, uh, I should be here same time tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.